let's talk through how we figure out uh, some characteristics or a defining equation for an adiotic, adiabatic process involving an ideal gas. Uh, so first off, we need to know what adiabatic means. Uh, adiabatic simply means that there is no heat transfer. Uh, usually we represent heat with the letter Q, so in equations involving Q, uh, that Q term is going to be zero. And adiabatic is just one of these terms that we're going to need to end up memorizing. So we have uh, the first law of thermodynamics, that heat transfer plus any work done uh, together make up the change in internal energy of our system. Since this is adiabatic, there's no heat transfer, so this becomes just work equals the change in internal energy. And I'm going to do uh, make a slight change to this. Rather than saying work equals change in internal energy, I'm going to say that that is true at every little tiny step throughout this process. And so for any little bit of work done, that's going to cause a little itty bitty change in internal energy. Uh, in the end, we'll do some integrals and get back to uh, terms like W and U. So we need to start with the work. So uh, a little element of work, dW, is the negative of the pressure times a little change in volume. Uh, negative because we're talking about the work done on the gas. So if the volume gets smaller, uh, that's work done on the gas. And so negative PdV would be positive. Uh, now the pressure is going to be changing. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to think about changing the volume of our gas. And as the volume changes, the pressure is going to change. So let's use the ideal gas law to rewrite pressure as number of particles times Boltzmann's constant times temperature divided by volume. Okay, we're in pretty good shape for work now. What about the change in internal energy? Well, we know from the equipartition theorem that each degree of freedom for each individual particle gets kT worth of energy. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that this is monotonic particles with three degrees of freedom. Uh, so we get three halves out front times kT. That's the equipartition theorem. And however many particles we have, each particle is going to contribute to the total internal energy. So we have an expression for u. If we take the derivative of this, we can get an, ex an expression for du as just 3 halves nk dt. OK, looking pretty good. All right, so let's go back to our du, dw equals du equation and plug in our expressions for dw and du. That gives us this expression here. And you notice there's a couple common terms. Uh, let's go ahead and cancel out the n and k that appear on both sides. And let's group some terms. We have dv and v on the same side. That's good. But we have a t, a temperature, over here. I'd rather have it over here with the dt. So let's divide each side by temperature as well. Going through that, we get this expression. Negative dv over v equals 3 halves dt over t. Uh, fairly simple looking equation, but we have these differentials, uh, dt and dv. I'd rather not have those, so let's integrate both sides of this equation. So we're going to integrate the volume from some initial volume to some final volume. We don't know what those are, but we're changing the volume. Uh, and as that volume changes, the temperature will change from some initial temperature to some final temperature. When we do this integral, if we integrate 1 over the variable, we're going to get some natural logs. And so we come out with a negative natural log final volume minus natural log initial volume equals 3 halves natural log final temperature minus natural log initial temperature. Now let's just do a little bit of algebra to clean this up. Uh, to do that, there's two relationships for natural logarithms that are very useful. Uh, one is that we can rewrite the difference of two natural logs as a ratio. That will let me combine the terms that are inside the brackets in our equation. Uh, another useful relationship is that c times the natural log of a is the same thing as the natural log of a raised to the c. So I'm going to use the second relation to bring this negative sign inside as a negative 1 power and to bring this 3 halves inside as a 3 halves power. When I go through those steps, we get this expression. Uh, so a little easier. Now that we have a natural log on each side, 
and no sums or differences, just a nice nat single natural log on each side, we can exponentiate to get rid of that. If we, raise, if we take e raised to a natural log, we get the argument of the natural log out. So I'm going to do e raised to the left side equals e raised to the right side. And we get this expression, no more natural logs. Uh, v final or v initial to the negative 1. Let's just rewrite that as v initial divided by v final. So now we're getting something that looks fairly simple, fairly easy to use. Uh, I'm just going to rearrange it one more step and get the final volume times the final temperature raised to the 3 halves equals the initial volume times the initial temperature raised to the 3 halves. And this is um, an equation describing any adiabatic process that involves an ideal gas. Uh, and in fact, this is true at any step along the process. When we did these integrals up here, we could have chosen any two points through the process, any two temperatures and any two volumes. And so at every point throughout the process, the initial volume times the initial temperature equal to, three, to the 3 halves is equal to the volume at that moment times the temperature at that moment raised to the 3 halves. And so occasionally in a textbook or online, you will see this written as just volume times temperature raised to the 3 halves equals a constant. Uh, so this is a nice expression for adiabatic gases. It helps us plot some curves, helps us uh, do some math and check if a process is adiabatic. Uh, those are some helpful things we'll want to do. Uh, before we wrap up, let's just review what the main steps of this uh, working through this problem were. Uh, we started out with the first law of thermodynamics, which relates heat transfer, work, and change in internal energy. We use the meaning of an adiabatic process to simplify that change in thermodynamics. Uh, and these, pro these steps that we're going through are common for a lot of different gas processes. So instead of an adiabatic process, maybe you're interested in an isothermal process. You would start with the first law of thermodynamics, think about what isothermal means, and use that to simplify your expression for the first law of thermodynamics. Uh, moving on, we wrote the first law in terms of dW and du rather than w and delta u. Uh, that lets us set up some nice expressions that we can then do the integrals at the end. We use the ideal gas law to rewrite pressure and the equipartition theorem to write an expression for internal energy. And notice that when we use the equipartition theorem, this is where we assumed that it was a monotonic gas. If it had been diatomic, uh, we would have had a little bit different expression for the internal energy coming from the equipartition theorem. Uh, we separated our variables. That's getting dV and V on one side, dT and T on the other side. Uh, then we just did the integral and a little bit of algebra to put it in a nicer form. Uh, and that is, in general, how we work through problems uh, involving some sort of gas process.